can you overcome the love of money? How can you overcome this greed? How can you overcome this excessive desire to become wealthy? Number one, God over wealth. You have to come to the realization that God is your source. Money is only a resource. By the time you start seeing money as your source and trusting in money, you are loving money. You are saving money. You are enslaved to it. But when you recognize God as your source, which scripture says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing, money and all other things you need in life shall be added unto you. You know that these are resources that you get from following God. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, No man can save two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will owe to the one and despise the other. You cannot save God and mammon. You can't save God and be enslaved to money. You have to come to this realization that God is the one that gives true wealth. The Bible says in Deuteronomy that he is the one that gives us power to get wealth. So we can't just get wealth by trying to look for get rich quick schemes because these things will only make us become greedy and want to get money at all costs. It to sway us from our faith and bring us to a place of constant dissatisfaction because there is no satisfaction in trying to get more and more money. So in order to be saved from this love of money, put God first and know that God comes first Money is only your resource. Number two, embrace generosity. There is no generous person that is genuine who can still be greedy. Generosity breaks the back of greed. By the time you become generous, you are going against what greed wants. A greedy person wants to get something for just them and themselves alone. It's just me, myself, and I. Which is, if such a person would find another person where the other person should get help or be favored, or get rich, they would take that opportunity from that person. If something was to be shared, they would want to get another person's portion to add to their own so that they will become richer. Because they feel like if another person becomes richer than them, it is a competition to them for another person to be richer than them. By the time you are generous, you are giving out. You are giving to people. You are not thinking of hoarding, hoarding, and gathering. You are thinking of spreading and spreading. You are in a place that greed is broken. Greed cannot have a ground. And scripture says in Proverbs 22, He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. And again it says in Proverbs 11:25, The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. It says in other translation, A generous person shall be blessed. Because you are watering people, you are blessing people, you are blessing to people, so there is no way God won't bless you. Even it says in scriptures that he that gives to the poor is lending to God. So once you are generous, it means you put your trust in God to provide for you. You recognize God to be your source, and all of these are resources. Number three, embrace fairness and honesty. Scripture says in Proverbs 11.1, 1, A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. God loves fairness. God loves honesty. If you are to do business with people, bring in honesty and bring in fairness. That is the opposite of greed and love of money. Greed and avarice think about deceiving people, lying to people to try to exploit them because you can't exploit people without bringing lies into the picture. But by the time you are fair and honest, you are breaking the back of greed. And that is the life God wants you to embrace as a child of God. And I hope that is not such a difficult thing for you to embrace. Lastly, scripture talks about contentment. So you have to come to embrace contentment. The Bible says that godliness with contentment is great gain. And for you to know this, that a greedy person is never contented. They are never satisfied. They want to get as much as they can. But once you embrace contentment with loving God and saving God and putting God first, you are breaking the back of the love of money from yourself. He that trusted in his riches shall fall. Oh no. This is telling you, please, if you are loving money, if you have the love of money, if you have greed, if you are so engulfed in avarice, get out of it because it's leading you to 
a place of falling. But the righteous shall flourish as a branch. If you embrace contentment, which the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. If you embrace God without trying to use God as a means to an end, if you embrace God just for him, knowing that God is the provider of everything you need, then you will come to a place of God blessing you with power ideas to get well the right way. And I hope this thought-provoking video has brought enlightenment to you to know that money is not the root of all evil. There's nothing wrong with adding money. Money in and of itself is a good thing to add. Because you need it, it is necessary. It is a necessity for you as a Christian. And I would dare say that Christians need this money most because with your good heart, as God has transformed you, you need this money to help people. You need this money to do good things. You need this money to reach out to people. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope that you are blessed by just watching. Thank you. And God bless you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if it has been a blessing to you. I am Uwe Bepa and this is my YouTube channel. Do well to check other videos that I have done and let me know what you think about these videos that you're watching. It's encouraging to me to hear from you and know that this thing is a blessing to you. So I appreciate all your feedbacks and I would appreciate your questions also for us to have a continuity in this conversation. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.